South Carolina's men's basketball team should feel confident going into this matchup against number four, Tennessee. Why? I'll discuss that and more on this special crossover edition between the Locked On Gamecocks and Locked On Vols podcast. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome into your Wednesday edition of Locked On Vols. It's also a crossover edition with Locked On Gamecocks. Host Andrew Lyon with me here today. We're going to do segments one and two, previewing everything that is Tennessee and South Carolina. A lot is at stake here and can't wait to dive into this matchup. Of course, it's a free listen, watch, subscription, and download wherever you watch your podcasts on YouTube, Locked On Vols, and Locked On Gamecocks. And of course, um, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to your podcasts as well. Shout out every dayers and thanks so much for making Locked On Balls and today Locked On Gamecocks as well your first listen. Uh, Andrew, let's dive into it, man. This is a, a huge matchup. Um, you know, both teams looking to uh, win the SEC. You know, with uh, with a win tonight, Tennessee can you know lock up at least a share of uh, the SEC title. And I know there's scenarios for South Carolina as well. Um, it feels like there's not a bigger rematch in SEC play this year with as much on the line as maybe tonight in Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, Eric, I completely agree with you. You know, Tennessee, I know, has played a brutal stretch to end the regular season. I know they played the Alabama Crimson Tide this past Saturday, which was also a big game for those two teams. The Vols coming out on top. South Carolina, you know, kind of the team that's been the most overlooked, weirdly enough, in the SEC, despite the fact they're 24 and 5 and sit here with a shot to at least, like you said, win a share of the SEC regular season title. You know, head coach Lamont Paris has done a tremendous job with this basketball program and sort of changing the perception, the image of this basketball program in a very, very short time frame. So I have no doubt that when this game takes place later tonight, it is going to be a closely contested battle between the Volunteers and the Gamecocks. I think that this is going to be a good one that's going to treat all the fans there in attendance. Yeah, I was going to ask. I mean, what do you what do you expect the environment to be like tonight? Again, this is, and I would agree with you. I think South Carolina is the most overlooked team in the SEC this year because Tennessee is a mainstay under Rick Barnes because Kentucky's Kentucky, because um, Auburn and Bruce Pearl is Auburn and Bruce Pearl, and I mean so on and so forth. But all Lamont Paris has done is just win. And and you know, I said on the show the other day, he he's the SEC coach of the year, probably the national coach of the year. Um, feels like South Carolina's got a chip on their shoulder, but having already won. This game in Knoxville, you're playing at home tonight. I feel like the environment is going to be really, really good tonight. It's going to be a challenge again for Tennessee. Yeah, Eric, no question about that. You know, South Carolina, the school as of right now is on spring break. So some fans might sit there and expect, well, maybe the crowd will be a little bit less than it otherwise would be. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think the Colonial Life Arena is going to be packed. The capacity for the arena is about 18,000 strong. Personally, I think that's a bit too big, but obviously when you can fill it up with your home fans, it can certainly make for an imposing environment. You know, the Florida Gators found that out the hard way this past Saturday, what was a very good game against Todd Golden squad. And I think that the crowd can play a factor in this game. I know that Rick Barnes, obviously, has been around the block several times as a head coach, and this team for Tennessee is quite experienced with the players that they've got. But I think that South Carolina, they've got to have a sort of a confident feeling going into this game. Because you mentioned earlier, they defeated Tennessee in Knoxville earlier this season. Almost nobody finds a way to do that against Rick Barnes' team. And it feels like that from a matchup standpoint, from a stylistic standpoint, as I'm sure we can get into maybe later on the show, that South Carolina is a team that can match up against Tennessee because they'll slow the pace down and, you know, force the volunteers to to play half-court basketball. And I know that Tennessee, they like to have their moments where they can run the floor on the fast break in transition. So I think that everything about this matchup in terms of the veterans both teams have, the kind of coaches that both teams have, and also the styles – and you're throwing a championship on top of that. It it makes this matchup way more intriguing than I think anybody would have thought it would be before the season began. I think there's no doubt about it. Um, The most electrifying and most popular player, um, especially in the eyes of the national media now who are starting to come around, in this ballgame is going to be Dalton Connect. Um, Dalton Connect did not play Superman at Alabama on Saturday night. He was very much a Robin to a couple of other guys. Um, he had a, he had a you know tough night shooting, but 
six times this year he's gone for over 30 points five times he's gone for 35 plus um he's been incredible man he's going to be unanimous all-american he should 100 percent be in the in the national player of the year conversation in my opinion he's going to be the sec player of the year what is the strat having said all that what is the strategy for south carolina to stopping dalton connect is it shut him out and take your chances with anybody else is it let him get his but shut everybody else out kind of how south carolina how should uh, South Carolina defend uh, Dalton Connect here tonight? Well, Eric, that definitely is an interesting question. I think it's always a good question whenever you look at a matchup like this because it's always, you know, you got two options. You can either try to shut down the star player and account for pretty much him and make everybody else beat you, or you could just go ahead and say, go ahead, go into takeover mode. See if you could do it for 40 minutes in our arena. Um, I don't know how Lamont Paris is exactly going to go about it. I would venture to guess, though, that he's not going to change his defensive strategies too much, despite how good Dalton Connect can be. Lamont Paris, as a coach, he is defensive-minded. He pretty much is a guy that really he emphasizes the fundamentals of basketball. And so defensively, that pretty much means don't do stupid little things that are going to get you beat off the dribble and allow your guy to drive just straight to the basket. Don't do something that's going to send the whole defense into a scramble drill because that's where opponents, especially like Tennessee, can get you with guys like Zakai Ziegler on the perimeter and also a Santiago Viscovi, who obviously it feels like has been there now and gotten two doctorate degrees. He's been playing so <laughs> long for this league. So um, I think that for the Gamecocks, you'll probably see them play man-to-man -man and just basically tell Dalton Connect again, hey, you know, you want to win this game tonight? Fine. You got to score about 30 points if you want to beat us. And I'm definitely not going to sit here and say they're going to stop him. I don't think really anyone has stopped him. You know, Alabama might have been an exception this past weekend, but I think that Connect's still going to get his points, but South Carolina is going to lean enough on the rest of their guys to do their job that he's going to have to play, you know, pretty efficient basketball on the offensive end if the Volunteers want to walk out of the Colonial Life Arena with the win later tonight. Should be a good one. We're going to continue to dive into the matchup. If Tennessee needs to win, what does Tennessee need to do outside of Dalton Connect? That and a whole lot more. It's coming up next as we continue on with this crossover edition. It's Locked On Vols and Locked On Gamecocks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry about buying those tickets to the next big event. I'm not talking just sporting events like Tennessee and South Carolina. Uh, I'm talking about concerts. I'm talking about PBR at the Food City Center this past weekend. I'm talking about concerts. It feels like every time I'm driving on campus, at least here in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, man, there's something going on over there at the Food City Center, and you can buy tickets to um, anything, any event in the area, the Food City Center, the the Bijou Theater, the Tennessee Theater, Lindsey Nelson Stadium, and of course, Neyland Stadium, and, and in Columbia, South Carolina as well, by downloading the Game Time app and um, you know, checking out those killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, the best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets as well. It's got the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, even job loss protection as well, and you get to see your seat. They're going to show you your seat so you know exactly what you're paying for right up front it's the place for procrastinators to buy their tickets uh staying open until even an hour after the event starts over there on the game time app download game time app today create an account use the promo code locked on for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again encourage you to create an account redeem code locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n for 20 dollars off your first purchase download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guarantee more of locked on crossover locked on balls and gamecocks that is coming up next. All right, we continue on here with Eric Kane of Locked On Balls, Andrew Line of Locked On so Gamecocks, Locked On South Carolina, South Carolina Gamecocks, and uh, getting you set for a big time showdown in Columbia, South Carolina here tonight, Tennessee, and uh, the Gamecocks. So, talked about Dalton connected there a little bit in segment number one. You mentioned, you know, Santiago Vescovi and you know, Zakai Ziegler and Josiah Jordan James. I think the biggest testament to this Rick Barnes team is, you know, last year and years past when you've been searching for offense, it's, you know, it's been Vescovy, it's been James, it's been Ziegler, you know. This year you have a Batman, and that that is Dalton Connect. And 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 Santiago Vescovy is, you know, taking a huge step back, but his defense has improved. His rebounding's has improved. He's still playing a viable part for this offense. Uh, since, or, uh, Zakai Ziegler one of the best point guards in the country, in my opinion. And then Josiah Jordan-James, the versatility factor, he had to play the five a little bit at, at times at, at Coleman Coliseum last weekend because of you know foul trouble with the bigs. And 
I think those veterans changing their roles are a reason why Tennessee's been so successful this year, of course, with the addition of Dalton Connect. So I'll be intrigued to see kind of what this looks like. What's um I asked you about stopping I asked you about stopping a guy like Dalton Connect. When you have a guy like Jonas Adu, who has put up several double doubles so far this year and you know, capable of being all SEC type player, um, how challenging is that if, if Adu is on in the front court to defend both Adu and Dalton Connect, you know, for a stretch in this basketball game. Well, I think that if South Carolina has a hard time defending Jonas Adu, what that's going to do for the Volunteers, Eric, I'm just going to take a guess, is I would say that it will open up the pick and roll game at the top of the key. That is an area where South Carolina defensively at times has struggled against their opponents. There's not very many areas where they do struggle, but I would say that area is one of them. Um, particularly a B.J. Mack. I would say that a Colin Murray Boyles is a true freshman four for South Carolina's basketball team. He's going to be all right um, because Colin Murray Boyles is a future NBA player. He's He's gotten some double-doubles in his own right. He started off the season with mononucleosis, so it wasn't until probably about four or five games of the SEC play before he really got things going again. But for the Gamecocks, I certainly think that with the perimeter shooting ability that the Volunteers do possess in this starting lineup, you cannot allow this team to play inside out. You do have to make sure that you shut down Jonas Adu and uh, Josiah Jordan James and anybody else in that front court that tries to go at the basket. Because if you can't, then that's going to potentially turn this game into more of a track meet. And that's not the kind of game that South Carolina wants to play. South Carolina, again, wants to slow things down, be methodical on both ends of the floor, and want to make this sort of like a 70 to 60 something kind of game, which is right down their alley. Close game. They can play that kind of game in their in their home arena, but I don't think they want to go down, you know, double digits, 10 plus points. They were able to get away with it this past Saturday against Florida, but they haven't been able to do that often this season. So I'm not going to all of a sudden sit here and say they can do it two games in a row against this time a top five team, the Tennessee Volunteers. So I certainly do think that that is very important for the Gamecocks defensively later tonight. So you've kind of gone into it a little bit, uh, you know, defensively and defending Dalton Connect, and a little bit out right there offensively. But you know, offensively, what is the what's the game plan? What what's the game plan tonight? In your opinion, I know you're not in those those meetings for South Carolina, in um, in trying to attack Tennessee and trying to you know score more points in Tennessee when it's all said and done. Yeah, Eric, I think the game plan. You know, I don't want to sound too generic. When I say this, but I mean, I think the game plan is going to basically just be play South Carolina basketball. And what that means offensively is do not play isolation basketball. You look at a team like Kentucky, for example, you got a Robert Dillingham on that squad on Austin Reeves. Guys are going to play in the NBA one day. And those guys, they can play one on five basketball and they can make plays happen. South Carolina does not have many guys like that. The one guy that you could probably point to and say can play that way a little bit is Michi Johnson, uh, but he can also be very cold depending on the day that he has. So for the Gamecocks offensively, they're going to look to swing the basketball around the perimeter. They want to share the basketball. They want to sort of keep the defense moving. And the thing is, it's a different kind of fatigue with the way South Carolina operates offensively because when we talk basketball, we always talk about the physicality and the battle on the interior. But for South Carolina, because of how long these possessions play out, you know, that can create a mental fatigue for their opponent because it can make you a lot more antsy. It keeps you on your toes. You don't know what's going to happen next. And sometimes maybe if you like to play a track meet like Tennessee does at times, you might even get a little bit impatient. And South Carolina tries to capitalize on that when they can. So you'll see them take some last second shots sometimes with like two seconds left on the shot clock. And if they're making their shots, then it can really just be a dagger in the heart of their opponent, especially in a close game like it was in Knoxville just a few weeks back. So the Gamecocks, they're going to look to play their brand of basketball. If Tennessee forces South Carolina to play more one-on-one, -on -one, then the volunteer fan base should feel like that there's a much better shot of winning this game because South Carolina, when they have gotten in those kind of stretches in some of these games, uh, their offense just drops off a cliff. Because like I mentioned, they don't have many shot creators and difference makers that are of that capability besides Michi Johnson. So that should be what you should watch for South Carolina's offense when going up against this Volunteers defense. Yeah, and really the only guy that would ever play ISO basketball for Tennessee in the half court is, is Dalton Connect. And it's not often that he does it, but you know when he's on a roll, he'll tell everybody to clear out and he'll go to work. But you know no, nobody else really does that for Tennessee. Um, and as far as defensively, I mean, you're talking about obviously one of the best defensive teams uh, in the country. And, you know, that's, you don't play for Rick Barnes unless you're going to play defense. And 
Um, you know, Zakai Ziegler, Santiago Vescovi, uh, Jemai Meshack, you know, the versatility to guard the bigs, to guard the, you know, guards in the backcourt. I think Tennessee will, will do anything they can to harass the half court play if you're going to take down the shot clock and, and try to waste time that way a little bit. Um, Tennessee's won a lot of games in a rock fight, not necessarily this season, but under Rick Barnes, Tennessee can win those rock fights. And, uh, hopefully it's not a rock fight tonight because I think we want to see a good basketball game, but Either way, we spend it. If your team, if uh, South Carolina wins, your listeners will be happy. If Tennessee wins, my listeners will be happy. Hey, um, anything else on the game that you want to ask me in terms of Tennessee? Um, if not, I wanted to ask a, a couple of football questions before we say say goodbye. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess, Eric, I'll just go ahead and ask you, you know, we haven't given a prediction yet. So what do you think is going to happen this game? Do you think that Tennessee is going to get revenge on South Carolina or – do you think that this one is one that just kind of comes up short for the volunteers at the end of the day? You know, I, I mean, Tennessee's capable, capable of winning every single game on its schedule. It's capable of beating every single team in the, in the country. However, that's not how basketball works. And sooner or later, I mean, Tennessee, this, this two week stretch you referenced earlier. I mean, it was at Auburn or it was Auburn at home last Wednesday night at Alabama at South Carolina tonight. And then a home against Kentucky. Nobody in the country is playing that schedule to end the season. And so you've had two emotional wins come from behind win at Coleman Coliseum. I mean, sooner or later, Tennessee is going to be tired. And I'm not saying Tennessee won't be able to get amped up. I mean, you're playing for an SEC title line. I get that. Um, but I just I wonder when there's going to be that slip up. And I, I don't know. Hopefully it's not tonight. So, I mean, I think, I mean I'll, I'll pick Tennessee to win. There's no reason for me not to pick Tennessee to win the way that Dalton can explain this year and the way Tennessee's been playing the last week or so. I'd be foolish not to say Tennessee's going to win, but if Tennessee were to lose this game on the road, it wouldn't be shocking because obviously South Carolina is a good team and and you are playing at home. Now, somebody asked me earlier for Twitter Tuesday, more impressive when winning on the road at South Carolina this week or winning at home at Kentucky for Tennessee. Kentucky's got more NBA players than anybody. We know about that. Kentucky's an amazing offensive team in the country, but um, winning on the road at South Carolina, I think, would be even more impressive this week. So we'll see what happens. I, I don't have a score prediction um, like like we're going to do with football, but I'll pick Tennessee to win. I'll pick Tennessee to win by, you know, four. I'll, I'll pick Tennessee to win by four, and I think it'll be one of those tough, contested basketball games. What say you? What do you think uh, about tonight, how it's going to go? Yeah, Eric, I'm pretty much right there with you in terms of like the final point margin. Again, I don't think either team runs away with it. If either team does, I think it is definitely an impressive win for that squad. But I think that South Carolina probably gets this, you know, 74-69, I'll say. Um, I will tell you this. The, here's a fun fact for you going into this game. Only two times this season has South Carolina allowed their opponent to score 70 more points, and the Gamecocks still came out on top. That's been the magic number. So if South Carolina holds you to under 70, the Gamecocks feel extremely confident they're going to come out winning. But if the Volunteers score 70 plus, then your odds of winning just go through the roof more than likely. So that's going to be sort of the magic number for Volunteer fans to pay attention to and Gamecock fans also going into this game. It's good news for Tennessee that is much improved on the offensive end this year compared to years past at points in times. Uh, should be a great one. Can't wait to watch it out the door, man. Tell me a little bit about um, about South Carolina uh, quickly. Um, spring practice. Uh, I would assume you guys are going to start, you know, after spring break here in about a week or two. Um, what, what's what's kind of the main storyline for South Carolina at spring practice uh, for Shane Beamer this year? I think the main storyline, Eric, is uh, there's a lot of new faces for this team. South Carolina was a team that dove heavily into the transfer portal this offseason. Obviously, you get Raheem Rocket Sanders out of Arkansas. Don't think he's going to practice too much in spring ball. One, he's a veteran, quite frankly. He doesn't need to go through many spring ball practices. But also, he's dealing with a bit of procedure. He got on one of his shoulders a month or two back. So they're going to be a bit cautious with that, make sure that he gets healthy again before they just throw him right out there into this offense. Lenore Sellers, uh, redshirt freshman, you know, just like kind of Nico with Tennessee, Gamecock fans have been waiting for Lenoris to take over the quarterback position. And uh, he's the starter, I, I would say, as of right now, going into spring ball. So how does he look, you know, now being the guy manning this offense and this staff? I mean, there are multiple new faces on this staff. I think South Carolina's got a new special teams coordinator, which is a big deal for Shane Beamer because of how much he puts an emphasis on special teams. Uh, new wide receivers coach, new running backs coach new tight ends coach. Um, offensively, a lot of new faces. Defensively, the unit that kind of held you back last year, I don't think anybody left. 
So, you know, how does that play out for Shane Beamer? If the defense looks bad again, dare I say, you know, that could be his downfall in Columbia. So, you know, he's he's taking a couple gambles. Uh, James Coley going to Georgia. I know some SEC fans have their opinions on what he said about that this past Friday. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be very interesting no matter what happens in Columbia this offseason, Eric. That, I can guarantee you that. Yep, no doubt about it. Uh, SEC expansion, new era of college football. Um, you know, you just you gotta love where we're at in college football in terms of year-round entertainment. But tonight, it is basketball entertainment, Tennessee at South Carolina. We will see if the Gamecocks can pull off the season sweep of the number four team in the country, or if Tennessee can continue riding this high of this last two weeks of the regular season and win another emotional one at South Carolina to split the season uh, series with the Gamecocks. We'll uh, we'll find out, and of course, we'll recap it all in Locked On Vols and Locked On Gamecocks tomorrow with Eric Kane and Andrew Line. Andrew, appreciate it as always, man, and uh, we'll see what happens, and we'll talk more football in the spring, okay? Absolutely, Eric. Thanks for having me. It was great chatting with Locked On Vols host Eric Kane, as it always is, but we're not done yet talking about tonight's game. In a couple moments, I'll talk about the one guy that South Carolina has got to stop in this contest. And here's a hint, it's not Dalton Connect. I'll discuss who that player is in just a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy and also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, and LED headlights, whether into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. All right, so chat a lot there with Eric Kane, the Locked On Vols podcast, about tonight's matchup between the number 17 South Carolina Gamecocks and the number four ranked Tennessee Volunteers. And the biggest name going into this matchup between both teams is obviously Dalton Connect, a guy that's considered the potential front runner for SEC Player of the Year and maybe even being the National Player of the Year. And certainly, he's going to draw a lot of attention from South Carolina's defense. But Dalton Connect is not the Tennessee volunteer that South Carolina has to stop tonight. The guy that they need to contain is point guard Zakai Ziegler. Zakai Ziegler, because he is the point guard, he's essentially the player that makes this Tennessee offense flow, that keeps everything moving throughout a possession. He's essentially their Talon Cooper. And the assist numbers back up that notion, as Zakai Ziegler to this point in the season is averaging 5.8 assists per game, which leads the conference. Now, the first time that South Carolina played Tennessee, Zakai Ziegler, he was not very effective in that matchup. He was basically nullified on the offensive end by Talon Cooper as he finished the game with just three assists, two turnovers, and shot 0 of 6 from the floor, scoring only two points, which came via the free throw line. Now, a big reason why I think Zakai Ziegler struggled mightily the first time both these teams matched up against one another is because, simply put, Taylon Cooper has a massive size advantage in that matchup. Zakai Ziegler is listed at 5'9", 171 pounds, according to his official Tennessee player profile. Taylon Cooper, on the other hand, is listed at 6'4", 200 pounds. If you need the quick math on all of that, Cooper has a 7-inch height advantage and a 29-pound weight advantage when matched up against Zakai Ziegler. 
And so because of that, even though Tennessee tried like crazy to get the pick and roll game going at the top of the key, allowing Zakai Ziegler to drive to the basket, which is a big part of his game. He wants to be able to run full steam ahead to the basket and then basically have options. Dish it off to maybe a front court player or if maybe a wing player tries to creep over and get involved, dish it out to the corner for an easy three-point shot. It's kind of the way that Michi Johnson likes to play whenever he is the primary ball handler, and the same can be said for Zakai Ziegler. But because of the size advantage that Talon Cooper had, Ziegler was not really, again, all that effective. He wasn't able to do what he wanted to do. And so, going into tonight's game, I'm sure that Rick Barnes, Tennessee's head coach, is going to have some adjustments that he has made in preparation for this game when it comes to that regard. Because Dalton Kinnett can go out there and score 30 points if he wants to. If Zakai Ziegler for Tennessee is not doing a whole lot on offense especially, I think South Carolina is going to win this game. And I don't think it's really even going to give you a second thought in that regard. So... For the Gamecocks, obviously, again, you know, it goes back to the conversation Eric and I had about how do you strategize here defensively? Do you put all of your attention towards the superstar three-level scorer in Dalton Connect, or do you try to make everybody else beat you? Obviously, with the way Lamont Paris likes to coach, and in terms of his defensive philosophy, he is a coach that is not going to be a bit overzealous in terms of trying to game plan for just one particular guy. He's pretty much going to sit there and say, look, Dalton Connect's going to get his points. He's going to make tough shots. And even if you play good defense, he's going to get his. So let's make sure that we are tightening things up everywhere else on the floor so that even if Dalton Connect has a good night, Tennessee is still struggling from a holistic standpoint offensively because they can't get other guys involved. And when it comes to that aspect, it has to start with South Carolina's defense on Zakai Ziegler. So he is the guy that the Gamecocks have to contain tonight if they want to secure a series sweep of the Tennessee Volunteers here in the 2023-24 season and also remain in the race for the SEC regular season title. It doesn't get any better than this. That's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show. As always, what are your thoughts and feelings going into this game? Are you confident that South Carolina is going to win, or are you a bit worried that Tennessee might get them back this time around? What do you think the Gamecocks have to do in order to win this game? Is it stop Dalton Connect? Maybe stop a Zakai Ziegler? Or is there another player that you think they need to watch out for in this matchup? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube, or you could shoot me a direct message on X at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. As always, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. If you're traveling to the game tonight, be safe as always. I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.